Hi everyone, I'm excited to present the seventh installation in our famous artist series. This one is all about Vasily Kandinsky. Some people pronounce his first name Vasily. He was from Russia. Um, I have changed up the format of this video and I'm trying kind of a screencast option. You'll have to let me know what you think about this, but I think that having this visual um, may be really helpful for you. So the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of how I've set up this unit so that once you start it with your kiddos, you can hit the ground running. So let's dive right in. This unit is organized into four distinct sessions, ideally 40 minutes each. Obviously, if necessary, you can kind of pull some of this a la carte and customize it for your setting. Um, the first session of those four is broken into three parts. The first one is a digital storybook. So let's take a look at that. Um, this is Mr. Kandinsky. He's not alive anymore, but he and his artworks are still very famous. You're gonna show the kids several of his works. I would say this one right here might be his most famous in the kind of young kids art world. Um, you may be familiar with it yourself, um, but this guy is known for being the first abstract painter, which is pretty impressive to kids. And he uses um, real familiar basic circles and squares and lines, triangles, rectangles. Um, so he is one of those guys, his artwork is, is the kind of abstract artwork that feels very accessible to young kids. They understand the language of basic shapes. Um, so this script is strategically composed to focus kids' attention on Kandinsky's ideas about visualizing sound. He really was a huge um, kind of believer in the idea that colors made, you know, had sound connections and sounds had color and shape connections. And so he made all these paintings exploring that concept. And the idea of daydreaming while listening to music is, you know, one of those things that's really relatable and universal to young kids. Um, so you should have a lot of fun with this one. He used, um, or his use of geometric shapes and lines to interpret sound is really our inspiration for this studio project um, in this unit. So after looking at several examples of how he did this, you're gonna explain to the kiddos that they will soon be creating their own abstract sound pictures. So once you get through the digital storybook, you're going to present this picturing sound activity. And I have included um, two links. The first one is a link um, to a video of a guy playing Mozart. And the second one is that same guy playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, the first movement. These two videos, or I should say these two pieces of music have, are very different in tone. And you're going to, um, you know, want to have two music samples that are different in tone just to kind of push the kids in a couple different directions um, imagination wise. Let's take a listen to this sample. Whoops, let me see. So you can tell right away that's a very upbeat song. And if we listen to the next one, we can hear a very different mood. It's much more somber. So you wanna let kids listen to um, two different sound samples. If you wanted to swap in different video links, you are more than able to do that. Um, you would literally just click on the box. Oh, it's not gonna let me do that on here, but you'd click on that box and you can literally delete it. And then within Google Slides, you'd go to insert and then a video and then paste in a link to any YouTube um, music that you you know might prefer. Um, but these two are, you know, are nice kind of easy, not easy, but uh, they're instrumental and because of their contrasting tones, um, they really lend themselves to, um, you know, different types of thinking. And so you want to let kids listen to each one at least 30 seconds. 
I have them you know, put their heads down and close their eyes and really get the room nice and quiet and invite them to use their imagination while they listen and see where their daydream heads. What kind of colors do they start to think about? What kind of shapes and lines and ideas are they thinking about? Um, they, they're able to do this and they have fun with this. So after you, know, you listen to the music sample, give a few of them a chance to share where their mind went and you know, be honest with them about where your mind goes too. Um, and the next activity or video link in there goes to an animation. There are tons of animations on YouTube um, that are all about what Kandinsky might've been thinking about with his um, designs. Let's take a look at this one. So it goes on and actually gets more interesting. Um, but if for any reason you want to swap out a different one, same as the other video links, that's something you can do. I should also add um, that these links have no affiliation with Kids Art Projects 101. So um, if any of these YouTube channels make any changes, these links um, may become problematic. So um, if you are using this file, especially over time, uh, next year as well or something, in you realize the link is not functioning the way it should, um, please send us an email and we'd be happy to go in and update them um, if you need help with that. So once you um, give kids just a little quick peek at um, some of that animation um, and help really kind of build that connection between uh, sound and visual thinking, you are going to kind of flip it around and let them try to draw as they listen. So you're gonna pick something to listen to. I recommend you make it instrumental um, in nature so that they're kind of thinking in an abstract way, but you're gonna present these three handouts and let them choose one. You, especially if you go with option C, could actually just use a plain white piece of paper. Um, option A and B are more, you know, a guide them to use color. What kind of colors does this um, you know, music make you think of, whereas option C really gives them an opportunity to think super freely and just draw and doodle um, as they listen. So they are going to work on that up through the end of your session. Now, if they don't finish, save those because at any other point, those can be used as early finisher options. Um, oh yeah, this slide is just kind of a reminder to put on some instrumental music during that uh, drawing activity. But once they get done and you have run out of time, have them show what they came up with to a classmate and that will mark the end of session one. So when they come back for session two, they are going to, um, you're gonna break that session into two little chunks as well. One where you're really looking at the individual components, the shapes and the lines that Kandinsky used in this particular composition. And then they're gonna start the studio project. Now, I call it a painting, it's really more of a printmaking project and we'll take a look. This is his um, composition eight from 1923 and I love it because it so clearly includes squares and circles and rectangles and lines, parallel lines, intersecting lines. Use that vocabulary. You'll see shrug your shoulders if you find a circle. Raise your eyebrows up and down if you find a triangle. This just kind of em engages them um, physically in their response and has them kind of giggling, but also really identifying um, shapes and lines. So you're gonna go through that with them and have some fun. And then you're going to kind of lock in on the idea that this is gonna be our language for the day. We're gonna use these elements to interpret some sound. So you're going to, I recommend doing this in advance, you'll set up a little um, station for each maybe pair or uh, trio of kids. And it basically involves putting paint on a tray, setting up a bunch of objects that then can be dipped into the paint, and then they stamp that onto paper as they listen to music. Now, I use plastic cups. I cut off the rim of some cups to make semicircles. Um, 
I used a protractor, a credit card, a marker tip, a Q-tip, that kind of stuff. But um, I work with very large groups, um, many of them in a row. And so it's important for me to have stuff that's washable. That's why I like plastic cups. But if you are working with a small group or only one group total, cardboard, paper cups, cardboard um, pieces, like using the flat edge of those for lines is all a really great option too. It's just that that doesn't lend itself to being reused. So um, keep that in mind if you are somebody who works with multiple groups. You'll be able to reuse your stuff if it's washable. Um, so you're going to play music and let them stamp away. And once you run out of time, you will put those prints over to dry somewhere. And then we move into our third session. Now the third session is where you're adding color. You might have noticed in that second session, the only thing I provide for them is black paint. And that's because I don't really want them thinking about color yet. I like in session two for them to be thinking specifically about shape and line. Then in the third session, we talk about color. So Kandinsky had some really specific ideas about color. We know this because he wrote it down. Um, I include in the slideshow a list of his interpretations of different colors and how they relate to different sounds. You could go onto YouTube and play a flute sample or a trumpet sample or a violin sample and ask them, what do you think? When you hear this noise, does a certain color come to mind? Emphasize to them that it's okay if they disagree with some of the interpretations that Kandinsky had. He was, he's not the authority on their imagination. They are perfectly, um, you know, able to interpret it in their own way. So encourage them to do that. And then you're going to present um, the whole idea of adding color to their designs from session two. Now, I recommend oil pastels. And I love oil pastels with little guys because the colors are super vibrant. It feels like a novelty to them, um, you know, in comparison to their prop likely um, familiarity with crayons and markers and color pencils. Um, but oil pastels can be a little expensive. So if you're on a budget, do not feel bad about using the materials you already have. Um, I would recommend avoiding watercolor paint Although I love the idea of painting in color, um, water, color water is gonna reactivate that black tempera paint and you're gonna get real contaminated colors. So unless you used something like acrylic paint, which is more um, permanent in nature for session two, you really gotta avoid adding water-based paint on top of it to add color in session three. Um, so if you do go with oil pastels, you wanna just kind of point out to kids that they're real oily in nature. They're going to rub off on their fingers. They're going to need to wash their hands at the end of the session. They need to keep their fingers away from their eyes and their mouth while they're working, kind of demonstrate how they can itch their face with the back of their hand while they're working. Um, and remind them to kind of keep an oil, an eye on those oil pastels. If they roll off the table and get stepped on, they really do kind of grind into the ground and it takes some work to get them the stain off the ground. It, it's doable, but it takes work. So um, if you want to keep those oil pastels in a tray or something to keep them from rolling off, that's just a little quick tip on that. Um, then, oh, I should mention, you're going to need, I would highly recommend that you put music on um, during session three where they're adding the color as well. It does not have to be the same exact music sample from session two. It can be, um, but you're welcome to put something on with a different kind of feel to it if you want to for the color activity. And they will work on that all the way through the end of session three. And so for session four, if you're familiar with my other um, units, I usually like to close out the whole project with a, 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 a session where they're doing a review about what they've learned, an art show, and a self-assessment. So I pose some real simple questions in this format, um, but I include some empty slides like this at the end of the file if you would like to customize your review based on however you specifically presented this stuff to kids, um, that's an option. And then same thing for the art show. I highly recommend that you let them spread out all their work 
so that they can all take a look at what they came up with and kind of see how each of them interpreted the music. Um, you'd be surprised at how different they all end up looking. Um, this is an important time to you know, emphasize the use of kind words and positive feedback. You're gonna um, you know, see this is a good opportunity to review some of those vocabulary words, intersecting lines, parallel lines, squares, circles, rectangles. You can even throw in trapezoids, rhombus, you know, quadrilaterals if you wanna get fancy. Um, these slides are just suggestions and you of course have empty slides at the end of this um, file that you can customize if you want to put in different prompts. You can also let that art show conversation flow organically. If you have a group of kids who um, love to talk, then you may not need to pose all these questions. They may just spontaneously start talking, which is fantastic. Um, the last component, as I said, is a self-assessment. And you can print out a copy of this for each child if you have the resources to do that. If you do not, you can just simply project this file up on the screen the, in your within your um, resources that came with this. You'll have like a PDF of this file that you can project. Um, it walks them through, you know, very specific components of that studio project. Did I use a variety of shapes? Did I use a variety of colors? Was I actually responding to music? Did I? you know, use my materials carefully, that kind of thing. So it's just an opportunity for them to kind of self reflect. Um, and you can put in some individual comments. If you do print these out, this is a nice um, thing to supplement as you send this project home with the kids at the end. Um, but again, you know, I know in my classroom, printing things out is, is usually a challenge. So there are ways around printing that. Um, and then I just threw this in um, I mentioned this already earlier. You could go back to those session one handouts if time permits. If any kid finishes early, that's a nice, easy filler um, to just let them go back and try to either finish one that didn't finish or pick a new handout and try one of the other ones. Option two here, I highly recommend figuring out a way to integrate this into this unit. And it is Chrome Music Lab's um, digital drawing and soundboard. It's Kandinsky inspired, so it could not be more perfect. Um, it is a setup where kids actually click and drag and it gives them a sound. How fun is that? They can change the color. They can get different sounds. So it's just one of those fun ones. If you have, um, if you know, tablets you can let the kids play on or even desktop computers, it does need, um, you know, sound is a critical part of it. So if you have headphones they can use or they can all kind of play in separate areas of the room and hear what they're working on. Um, it's just a really fun resource to let them play with. So I highly recommend checking that out. And that brings us to the end of this unit. I hope that you um, found this particular screencast format uh, helpful. I would love some feedback if you'd rather see me directly talking about this kind of stuff. I can always revert back to that format, but I thought maybe this would be um, a nice way to kind of walk through the unit. Um, and as always, if you do complete this unit, and are willing or able to take some pictures and share them with the group, we are very eager to see people in action. So that is highly welcome. Anyway, I hope you have fun and I hope you found this video useful.